Hi, this is the Tropical Tidbit for Sunday afternoon, July 8th. As always, the thoughts in this video are mine alone, and in making decisions, consult the National Hurricane Center and your local weather office for the latest information. We continue to track Beryl and now Chris in the Atlantic. We'll start with Beryl again. Uh, the life cycle of this storm about to come to an end, at least for this part of its journey. We have an exposed center of circulation that has continued to weaken over the last few days due to reasons we've discussed previously, and it is now on final approach to the Lesser Antilles, and it will likely pass near or over Dominica later tonight. There are tropical storm warnings up for Dominica and Guadeloupe, and especially on this north side here, that's where we could see a brief period where winds gust above tropical storm force 40 miles per hour or greater, and that's about uh, the extent of the of the impacts from this system, some uh, brief uh, showers and rain associated with this as it blows through, but this will be a rather brief event with the potential for tropical storm force winds for a short time. And as this enters the Caribbean, it should likely open up into a wave in short order as it uh, moves west-northwestward toward Hispaniola. Some showers uh, could affect Puerto Rico and uh, the Dominican Republic, uh, but this should no longer be much of a storm by that time. We do have some watches here also up into St. Kitts and Nevis and Montserrat, um, but uh, probably not going to see a lot of gale force winds there. Most of the impacts should be confined uh, as far as tropical storm force winds goes to Guadalupe and Dominica tonight. And then as this comes up past uh, Hispaniola, it will no longer be a storm, but uh, again, models do suggest that this could try to redevelop under marginally favorable conditions in the southwestern Atlantic in several days. And again, while that's possible, the pattern is likely to keep this east of the United States and west of Bermuda. So we'll just keep an eye on it, uh, but likely to be an open ocean event if it does redevelop later on. We'll just keep an eye on it. All right, so that's Beryl. We also have Tropical Storm Chris southeast of North Carolina continuing to spin around here in roughly the same location that it was in yesterday, uh, but gradually becoming better organized. And you can see the vigor with which these clouds are now rotating. This has become a more compact circulation since yesterday, and uh, that's a key ingredient to getting these things to start uh, circulating uh, moisture fluxes off the ocean and uh, really start confining convective heating in the core and therefore begin strengthening. And if we look at the recon data from the plane currently flying in there, we can see the fix is at 1,009 millibars. This is on the western edge of the convective envelope. Uh, you can see that we, we continue to have a frontal zone in here. It's, it's kind of hard to identify, but it's somewhere in here. This is not like the exact position, but there's the old cold front in here, and uh, the, the TC is sitting just ahead of that front. And since fronts are thermal gradients, thermal wind argues that there's also vertical shear here. And so there is some shear being imparted on Chris. And you can see that because the low level center is uh, on the western edge of the convection and the mid-level center is, is curling around just a little bit off to the east. So there is a little bit of tilt here to the circulation for the moment. But you can see some of this convection is trying to wrap around to the northern side and get to the up shear quadrants. And if that happens, uh, it'll be able to strengthen a little bit more. Uh, you can see some of this error behind the front on the northwestern side is a, is a little bit drier. So like we talked about yesterday, this dry air is infiltrating and uh, combined with the shear is, is keeping this kind of half a storm at the moment in terms of the thunderstorm activity only on the southeast and east sides uh, is where the convection is for now. If we look at the water vapor loop, you'll see the, the mid-level position of the front outlined quite nicely here. We can also see our little mid-level uh, upper low here uh, to the northeast of Chris, and this is the little thing that's helping to keep Chris uh, from going, well, it's keeping Chris from going this way really, because we have a big ridge over here uh, over the Ohio Valley, and if all else was left alone, it would be possible for Chris to sneak in toward the U.S. coast, but as it stands, that's not occurring thanks to this guy over here, which is providing just enough of a competing tug toward the east to keep Chris standing still, and not very much movement is expected over the next couple of days. Now this front will eventually start dissipating here. It's moving over warm water, it's moving over the Gulf Stream that's destroying the thermal gradient over the Western Atlantic. And so this front will weaken and at some point uh, conditions later tomorrow evening perhaps will really start getting better for Chris and we'll likely start seeing quicker intensification tomorrow as it continues to get more compact and the wind shear begins to lessen. 
Here's the uh, NHC forecast showing the first several forecast dots here really in the same kind of location. It doesn't move a lot prior to Tuesday evening and only by 8 a.m. Wednesday do you see uh, a forecast point where this is finally moving northeastward and it is expected to become a hurricane by that time. It's a little unclear exactly how strong this could become but it wouldn't be too surprising to see something like a category 2 or maybe even a category 3 hurricane. Uh, it's possible uh, but right now the official forecast is for a peak at 90 miles per hour high-end category 1. That will be largely immaterial to any uh, interest in the U.S. because this is expected to stay to the east and it will eventually impact southeastern Canada, Nova Scotia, and Newfoundland as it weakens uh, over cooler water. The important thing to note here is that the Gulf Stream uh, goes through here like this and south of this line there's lots of warm water but north of this line uh, the water gets really cold really fast and so as soon as the the hurricane moves up to about this forecast point it will start rapidly weakening on its approach to Canada however adverse weather will likely impact uh, the folks in here and so we'll keep a close eye on impacts from that as the storm comes up from the south one thing to keep in mind about this forecast is although it is expected to stay well offshore of the United States, uh, there is one little wrinkle to potentially watch for. This is the European 500 millibar forecast. Just to walk you through the steering for the next few days, here's Chris. This is for tomorrow morning. And uh, here's the low to the northeast, again, ridge to the north, keeping this trapped and not moving very much south of North Carolina. By Tuesday morning, same deal, storm in the same place. Now the ridge is weakening though because we have this trough, upper level trough coming into New England from the north and this is what's going to eventually pick this up and take it northeast because the, the flow is all out of the west on the south side of this trough and so as this comes southward it will begin to pull this with that flow toward the northeast. And one thing to note here, though, is this shortwave over Manitoba. This is something that models have been struggling to resolve correctly on some runs and only recently have the models picked up on its existence. And this is going to come down into the base of this long wave trough uh, during the following days. So here's uh, Wednesday morning. You can see the storm is now beginning to move toward the northeast as it starts to feel the flow around the base of this trough. Here's the shortwave I was talking about. And now here's Thursday morning, the storm continuing to move northeast toward Nova Scotia. This shortwave has dug in over Virginia. One thing to note is that it's, you know, there's a small, small possibility that if the storm is, is slow enough, this shortwave might be able to yank it just west enough to bring impacts of some sort on the outskirts of the storm to coastal New England. It's not impossible that that could happen. It's not currently expected and it's not particularly likely. But this is just one little wrinkle to note here because models are a little bit, uh, they're a little bit shaky on how to deal with this short wave and the exact timing of when Chris moves up because it's a little bit fragile. Some models are faster. The slower models have a better chance of interacting with the short wave and trying to hook it up just a little bit. Uh, before moving into Canada. So we'll watch to see exactly how close it gets to Cape Cod. Uh, but right now, the official forecast does keep this well offshore of the United States. No watches or warnings necessary, uh, but adverse conditions uh, will likely be felt in Canada uh, later this week, Thursday morning into uh, Thursday evening is the current expected time that this will move up uh, quickly through Southeast Canada. All right, we'll continue to watch Chris and Beryl. Beryl soon to be... Uh, be expired over the eastern Caribbean showers and rain for the islands and perhaps tropical storm force winds for Guadeloupe and Dominica tonight and then again Chris sitting here will eventually move northeast and most likely impacts will be for southeastern Canada in several days as the storm weakens eventually. Alright that's it for today. Thanks for watching.